quick stipulation before we get started. I implore you, I beg, I, I literally beg, and this is not for the sake of YouTube or monetization or anything, but I beg, please watch the whole video. If you don't watch the whole video, there could be some crucial information you will miss out on, and I'll give you a disadvantage. And don't think I don't won't know that you didn't watch the whole video, because I will. Because I, I'll know, because... I don't want to see a single comment one minute after I post this video. Show me your entries. Comprende? it? So, hello everybody. This is Stringing Him over here to announce start of my next tournament. The, the Dinosaur, Dinosaur King, King Premier, Premier tournament. tournament. In 2023. As you can see by my beautiful artwork here. So yeah, it's that time of year again where I announce another tournament for you lovely people to join. And join you shall because there are lots of changes in this one. Oh, it's going to be a tournament like no other. Like, this tournament is going to make everyone else's tournament look like a joke. Right, let's go through the rules, shall we? And don't worry, if you're a, if for my Japanese viewers, because I know I have quite a lot of them, I have translated all the rules and such, so you can see that at the end of this video. But without further ado, let's get on with our rules. So, as you can see here, it's going to be a tag team format, two versus two. A group stage format, like normal, so you'll play... Each guy wins, three points for a win, a point for a draw, zero for a defeat. You'll get a bonus point if you win without losing a dinosaur. And you will get a losing bonus point if you lose, but your opponent is down to their last dinosaur with our dinosaur's HP in the red. And yes, I have I have set a cap on the number of entries that I'm going to accept, because I, ha I have a feeling I'm going to get quite a few entries this time. <laughs> uh, last time I was overwhelmed with entries. 64 of them, I think it was around 64. Or 63, I think I had one bot team. But yeah, 63 entries, so I'm probably expecting the same amount again. But just in case I get overwhelmed with entries, because you guys never cease to amaze me, I have set a cap on 112. And, as, okay, as for one of the newest changes in this tournament, there will be new terrain advantages in effect. And I will go, I will go through all that later. And there are also new rules for Blitz-type dinosaurs, and for any dinosaurs using the move card Quick Strike. So again, I'll go through that later. And um, yeah, like normal, only one armor, secret, or super dinosaur can be used per team. Players will be grouped randomly like normal, except for those that finished well in the last tournament. Of course, that kind of depends on how many groups I have. So how many, and that depends on how many entries I have. So if I guess if we have 64, then it'll be the top eight of the last tournament will be separated into individual groups. And like normal, combined cards, egg cards, and cluster cards are not allowed. Life Force Swap and Haste is banned. Okay, so yeah, the deadline will be the 20th of December. I forgot to change it, uh, I forgot to change it before recording. And yes, this is something I'm gonna be clamping down on super hard this time. No multiple accounts. No using multiple accounts, because I had a big problem with that last time. Well, that doesn't happen this time. And if it does happen, well, I'll simply remove all their accounts from the roster and they won't be allowed to enter this and future tournaments. So just don't do it. And if you do want to enter, feel free to leave a comment down this video. Just this video, not any other videos. They will be voided. So just this video with the hashtag tournament2023. Or you can message me on Discord. Right, let's get on with the fun stuff. So for super dinosaurs, if you are using a super dinosaur, you must state how many turns you want me to wait before activating the awaken mode so basically same as past tournaments so you can check check out past tournaments if you want to get more clarification into that um the following moves are banned like normal so crimson flame these moves are basically rely on my little fingers because they're a pain in the ass to use on super dinosaurs okay so move removal effect for those that are new if a move removal takes place the dinosaur that caused the move removal will always go for the move that cannot lose so, for example, if you're using Spinosaurus and you get off a shockwave on your opponent's Carnotaurus and you remove that Carnotaurus's rock move, then your Spinosaurus will always go for Scissors because Scissors is the move that cannot lose. However, one little change I'm, I'm making is that this will not apply if consecutive move removal takes place because obviously with the tag team format, you're going to have support effects being a factor. And I think in the last tag tournament I did, we had, I had quite an issue with shockwave being consecutive shockwaves and that was kind of exploitable so yeah i'm putting a stop to that okay now for the swapping out mechanic and this is slightly different from last time so there will be three stages at which you can choose to swap out and yes you guys get to choose when you want me to swap your dinosaur out and this choice will also affect both dinosaurs okay so a dinosaur has a chance to swap out when 
when either its HP is in the red, its HP is below half, or its HP is in the yellow. And as I said, they're, cho they're chosen by the player, i.e. you guys, and will apply for both dinosaurs. Each dinosaur will only attempt to swap out once, so if you fail the swap, you won't get a chance to swap out again. And each dinosaur is only allowed to swap out once, so you can't keep chopping and changing dinosaurs. So that is how swapping out will work. Right, now on to the, not to the newest additions to this tournament. And we will start with the terrain advantage rule. So yes, this is something I've been working on for a, quite a while now. And I have teased it in previous, in past videos. And here it is, perfected in its beautiful gloriness. So yes, different dinosaur types will have terrain advantage depending on what battlefield is present. So this is basically inspiration from the DS game. So for the, well, I'm sure you can all, see, I'm sure you can see it yourself. So for the volcano field, obviously fire dinosaurs are going to be favoured, but earth dinosaurs will not like it. And... Yeah, meadow will favour grass. Some of these ones were quite difficult, like these two were kind of difficult because it's practically the same field, but yeah. Earth for the arid and then lightning for this dirt plainsy field. And we also have these two fields as well, so the Colosseum field will, will favour secret dinosaurs and the Alpha testing field will favour Alpha dinosaurs. Okay, now for the rules for the terrain advantage. So dinosaurs that have terrain advantage will always get the first hit when swapping in, starting, or coming in after a dinosaur dies. That hit will always counter your opponent's critical move. So, for example, say we are on the Volcano field and we have a Tyrannosaurus going up against a Spinosaurus. With the terrain advantage, that Tyrannosaurus will get the first hit, and that hit will be paper because it beats Spinosaurus's crit, which is rock. Okay, dinosaurs with terrain disadvantage, however, will always get hit when starting, swapping in, or coming in after a dinosaur dies. So we go to this Dirt Plains field, the Delta Dromius doesn't like this field, so the Eocarcaria will get the will, will get the first hit. That hit will beat Delta Dromius's critical move, so Eocarcaria will start with Rock. And as a little stipulation, if a dinosaur with terrain advantage faces a dinosaur with terrain disadvantage, then the dinosaur with terrain advantage will always open with a critical move. Will always get a critical move off. So if it's you're on a volcano field, if it's Tyrannosaurus versus Edmontonia. The Tyrannosaurus will start with a crit. Simple enough, right? I'm sure you I'm sure you'll get the gist of it, you'll get used to it. And then again, if two dinosaurs have either terrain advantage or terrain disadvantage, then nothing happens and moves will be generated like normal. Right, let's well we'll get on to blitz types in a minute, but I'll just quickly go through the death fire rules. So only one dinosaur can have death fire per team, and death fire is not allowed to be used with black T-Rex. I mean the move death fire, not like the actual death fire effect, just the move card. Now on to the second biggest change of this tour of this tournament, the blitz types and quick strike. Because blitz types see zero play in my tournaments because of how I generate the moves, so I've decided to give them a little bit of a help in hand this time. So any dinosaur that is blitz type or super blitz type, if you're ace, will always start with a critical move, but it will not get off a critical move because the opponent's move will be generated randomly like normal. But your your move will be critical move. But that doesn't guarantee that you'll get the hit. Just before I make that clear, any dinosaur using the move card Quick Strike will always start with scissors and the other guy's move will be generated randomly. However, if a dinosaur is both Blitz type and is using the move card Quick Strike, then its opening move will be a crit and then the next time the countdown starts at 10, the move, your move will be scissors. So you're basically stacking the blitz type and the quick strike on top. And any terrain advantages will always take first priority over the blitz type effects and quick strike. So here's my little order of priority here. So the terrain effects will happen first. And then once that's done, it'll be the blitz effects and then the quick strike effect. So for example, say you're using Acrocanthosaurus on the volcano field, which, uh, which the, where the acro is blitz type and has quick strike. So because of the terrain advantage rules, the Acrocanthosaurus will start off with a hit that will beat your opponent's critical move. We'll say your opponent is using Triceratops. So Acrocanthosaurus will get off rock, will hit start with a rock, and then the blitz type effect will mean that the Acrocanthosaurus' next move will go will be paper. And then the quick strike effect will mean that the Acrocanthosaurus' move after that will be scissors. Comprende? <laughs> It is a lot, I know, it is a lot to take in. It is a lot to take in, but I'm, I'm sure you will all understand 
the gist of it once the tournament gets started. So yeah, that is basically how Blitz types and Quick Strike will work. So yeah, I, ho I hope that it really gets you all excited for all these new changes. It's going to be a tournament like no other. Absolute insanity. Uh, right. Yeah, that's it. Now I'll just quickly go through the application format. So yeah, application form is mainly just to help out people who want to apply because... One thing I notice is that a lot of people don't really, they kind of like half-hearted apply, if you get what I mean. Okay, so up here we have the format. So your username, what you want me to call you by, your character card. So if, yes, character cards are allowed in this tournament, but just one character card, not two, just one. And obviously you don't have to, don't have to state which character card you're using. And if you don't, then it'll just be default. Your first dinosaur the battle type of that dinosaur, and then that dinosaur's moveset. And then your second dinosaur, that dinosaur's battle type, and then your moveset again. And you must also state when you want me to swap. So I gave you the three options. So either after HP is below half, or HP is in the yellow, or when HP is in the red. So this is quite important. So yeah, you do need to state when it when you want me to swap. If you don't, then I'll just go with default when HP is in the red. And if you're using a super dinosaur, you must state the number of turns you want me to wait before activating the awaken mode. So I've done a quick example on the right here with myself. So obviously username, character I want to use, my first dinosaur, the battle type of that dinosaur, the move set, and then I'm using su and then super egg Montonia here. It's moveset, obviously because it's a super dinosaur, I don't have to say what battle type it is. When you want me to activate the awaken mode of the Edmontonia, and when you want me to swap. So yeah, pretty self-explanatory here, I hope people can understand. Oh no, yeah, <laughs> don't forget the hash, if, if you're commenting down below in this video, don't forget the hashtag. <laughs> Very important. And as promised at the start of the video, I have translated all of these rules into Japanese for my Japanese viewers because I'm just considerate. So yeah, I will just quickly slideshow these. Just pause the video, read the rules, make sure you understand them and such. And yeah, that is basically it. So best of luck. I'm looking forward to seeing all your entries. And until then, this is Stranger Gamer signing out. Mm -hmm.